Do you know what are lasers and how do they work? If your answer is no, then stay tuned. Hello everyone. I am Rudula Borkar, first year electrical engineering student from Bajaj Institute of Technology, Vardha. In this video, I am going to apprise you what are lasers, their working principles and their types. Mainly, we are going to learn about ruby laser and helium neon laser. So let's get started. Laser is a device that produces monochromatic, coherent, high intensity and highly directional light. It was invented in 1958 by A.S. Shallow and C.H. Town. Now let's study the working principle. Working principle of laser is based on absorption, spontaneous emission, stimulated emission and population inversion. Now let's study absorption. An atom consists of a different energy state. Let us consider two different states of an electron such as ground state E0 and excited state EX. An electromagnetic energy falls on an atom in the form of photon. When photon energy falls on the electron, it jumps from lower energy level to higher energy level by absorbing the energy. This process of absorbing energy from photon is known as absorption. Now let's see spontaneous emission. It is known that electrons absorb energy from photon and moves from lower energy level to higher energy level. But the excited electron that had jumped from lower energy level to higher energy level does not remain in the same state for a longer period of time and comes back to its original ground state by losing photon. This photon are considered as incoherent light. This is called spontaneous emission. Now let's see stimulated emission. In this process, atom is initially present in its excited state. The photons stimulate the atom to move to its ground state. In this process, the atom emits an additional photon with the same energy. This process is called stimulated emission. In an atomic system, the number of atoms in ground state are more than excited state. This is because of tendency of electron to stay in metastable state. But in order for more photon to be emitted, there should be more electrons in excited state. This process is achieved through optical pumping and this is known as population inversion. Now let's see the types of lasers. Most important types of lasers are solid state laser, liquid laser, gas laser, dye laser and semiconductor laser. But today we will study solid state laser and gas laser. So let's study ruby laser. In year 1960, T.H. Mammon of Hughes Research Laboratories produced first laser, that is ruby laser. It is a solid state laser as the lasing material is solid, that is ruby rod. Here the ruby rod is combination of Al2O3 doped with chromium ions. It is a three level lasing system. Now let's see the construction. It consists of a ruby crystal which work as amplifier, a flash tube as the energy source, a glass tube, power supply, a perfectly silvered mirror and a partially silvered mirror. Now let's study the working of this laser. The flash tube fires and injects the light into the ruby rod. The chromium ions absorb light of wavelength 5500 angstrom and 4000 angstrom and gets excited to higher energy level. So these are energy level diagrams. The excited levels E3 and E4 are highly unstable, having lifetime of 10 to the power minus 8 seconds. But E2 is a metastable state having lifetime 10 to the power minus 3 seconds. So the chromium ions makes rapid transmission from E3 and E4 to E2. The transmission from E4 to E2 and E3 to E2 is non-radiative and given to the crystalline lattice. Since E2 is a metastable state, Chromium ions remains for longer duration, therefore the number of chromium ions at E2 goes on increasing while at the same time number of ions in ground state goes on decreasing due to optical pumping. Thus, the population inversion is established between E2 and E1. At metastable state, spontaneous photon is emitted by chromium ions which initiates stimulated emission by the other chromium ions. Then by stimulated emission other photons are emitted which are in the phase 
with stimulating photon. These photons travels along the axial direction and bounces back and forth from the mirror. Finally, the laser beam of wavelength 6948 angstrom emerges out from the partially silvered mirror. Here we can observe xenon flash lashes for a few milliseconds. So, metastable state gets depopulated very rapidly and lasing ceases. The laser becomes inactive till the population inversion gets established once again. Therefore, output of lasing in this laser is pulsating in nature. Now let's study helium neon laser. Helium neon laser was constructed by Ali Javan and his co-workers at Bell Laboratories in 1961. It is a gas laser based on four level laser system. It produces continuous and intense laser beam. Now let's see the construction. It consists of a long discharge tube of length 50 cm and diameter 1 cm containing mixture of helium and neon in the ratio of 10 is to 1 and the pressure inside the tube is about 1 mm of mercury. One end of a tube is fitted with perfectly reflecting mirror and other end with partially reflecting mirror. Now let's study the working of this laser. The powerful radio frequency generator is used to produce a discharge in the gas so that the helium atoms are excited to a higher energy level. So these are the energy level diagrams from helium and neon atoms. When an electric discharge passes through the gas, the electron in the tube collides with helium and neon atoms and excites them to metastable state of energy 20.61 electron volt in helium atom and 20.66 electron volt in neon atom above the ground state. Some of the excited helium atoms transfers their energy to unexcited neon atoms by collision. Thus, a helium atoms help in achieving population inversion. In neon atoms, when an excited neon atom drops down spontaneously from metastable state at 20.66 electron volt to lower energy state at 18.70 electron volt, it emits 6,328 angstrom photon in the visible region. This photon traveling through the mixture of the gas is reflected back and forth by reflecting ends that are mirrors until it stimulates and excites neon atom and causes it to emit a fresh 6328 angstrom photon in phase with the stimulated photon. This stimulated transmission from 20.66 electron volt to 18.70 electron volt is a laser transmission. The output radiation escapes from the partially reflecting mirror. Thank you.